So I was saying that our Vedic scriptures have described different means of reaching the ultimate realization. An aspirant does not need to reinvent the wheel. It's just like if you wish to make a house, you have a choice in America either to have an ephus wall or a stucco wall or a brick or a stone wall. You choose between these alternatives. You don't think, okay, let me create something new because that will take too long. In the same way, we have a short lifespan that we wish to utilize to reach our goal. And to do it most effectively, we refer to the scriptures. What are the means that they are describing, which were verified and testified by the great sages thousands and thousands of time over and over again. So we will not need to recreate something, rather utilize the tested paths. The Vedas talk about a path of karma, another of jnan, another of bhakti, another of ashtang yoga. Sage Narad has written one of the most important texts in regard to the path of Bhakti Yoga. So he says out here, this Bhakti that I am describing is above and beyond the other means which is Karma, Jnana and Ashtang. Now you may say that, you know, he is just liking his own path. But really, there is a science behind it, which we will try to understand. What is this karma? Karma does not refer to working in the office or cooking at home. The word karma in the Vedas has come for the ritualistic practices and ceremonies. So the rituals described in the Vedas are extremely elaborate. And if you wish to do them, you must fulfill the rules and regulations. And there are six such conditions to the karma. Deshe Kale Upayena Dravyam Shraddha Samanvitam Patre Pradiyate Yattat Sakalam Dharma Lakshanam. The scriptures say Desh Kal Padarth Karta Mantra Karm Shadvis Sampadyate Dharma Steti Dullabhatara Kalav. The scriptures say. When all these are fulfilled, you will get the fruit of karma. That means the place where you are doing it must be pure. The time must be appropriate. The material used must be pure. The person who is doing the yagya must be pure. The person who has arranged must have the pure intention and the mantras used must be perfect. Like for example, you have heard Yajurvedi Brahmans reciting mantras. Tachakshur Deva Hitam Purasta Chukra Mucharata Pashe Masharada Shatam Jeeve Masharada Shatam Pravrava Masharada Shatam Shatamadina Syama Sharada Shatam Bhuyascha Sharada Shatata Now while saying these mantras, they indicate with their hands and they lift and lower the scales. 
What is it that they are doing? Is it just an interest of theirs? No. To each syllable of each mantra of the Yajna ceremony, a scale has been attached that needs to be enunciated and indicated with the hands. <clears throat> but the condition is, there must be not a difference of even one scale or you will not get the fruit. Just like if a huge air bus, one wire has come off, the plane does not fly. You may say such a huge machine has been grounded because of one wire. That is how it is. So in the ritualistic section, the Vedas are very strict. Why? Because they want to dissuade us from that side. The fruit of these rituals is materialistic. Swarga Kamo Yajet Perform the rituals and achieve material benefit. So the Vedas say, look, if you are insistent, go ahead. But we will make it difficult for you. That is why even Dashraji Maharaj during the Ramayana when he wished to do a Putra Kameshti Yagya, there was only one Brahman on the whole planet Earth who was able to execute it properly. Vashishji did not do it. He said, I am not competent. Shringi Rishihi Vasishta Bulava Putra Kama Shubha Yagya Karava So this rituals or karma card are extremely stringent. And if you do them properly, what is the fruit? Not God realization, but materialistic benefit. In other words, you dig a mountain and find a mole hill. That is why Lord Krishna, who is the source of all the Vedas in the Bhagavad Gita, he is dissuading us from going towards the rituals. He says, Arjun, Yamimam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadantya Vipaschitaha Vedavadarata Partha Nanya Dasti Tivadinaha. Don't get attracted by the flowery language of the Vedas that promise you material rewards. Understand that they are temporary and they will all be snatched away. Maximum you will get from Karma Kand is Swarg. Swarga Kamo Yajet. But even the attainment of the celestial abodes will be temporary. Swarga Hu Swalpa Anta Dukhadai. So this is the path of Karma Kand. Yet, Four-fifths of the Vedic mantras are related to Karma Kant. 80,000 out of one lakh Ved mantras are the Karma related to the Karma section. You will say when that is not the goal then why so elaborate descriptions? Because the Vedas are realistic. They know that majority of humankind is not interested in God realization. Most people want materialistic benefits. So rather than letting them become frivolous, they say, all right, at least remain under the shelter of the Vedas. 
today you don't want God, but you have faith in the Vedas. Tomorrow you may rise further and say, what was the use of all this? Let me choose a higher goal. Now come to the second path, the path of Gyan Yoga. The goal out here is by intellectual analysis to understand I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the intellect and Swarupe Vasthana to become situated in the self. Not in theory. We all know in theory. I am the soul. Who doesn't know that? but in realization. Which means all these designations we have, I am a Gujarati, Marwadi, Sindhi, Bengali, Punjabi, Indian, American, all the designations of the body, to cut them all away. I am the pure soul by realization. In the path of Gyan, the endeavor is to stop the thinking process and finally allow the mind to reach the state of Nirvikalp Samadhi. No thinking. Like a stone does not think, the same manner. But what many people don't realize is that merely by self-knowledge, liberation will not happen. Liberation requires knowledge of God. The Shweta Shvatar Upanishad of the Yajurveda says, Tameva Veditva Timrityumeti Nanya Pantha Vidyate Yanaya only by knowledge of God will you be able to cross over the ocean of life and death. There is no other means. So the path of Gyan needs Bhakti for its completion. When the Gyani engages in Bhakti, he draws the grace of God. And through the grace of God, he is able to know God and then reach the ultimate goal. That is why in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Mat prasadad vapnoti shashvatam padam avyayam Arjun, param pad, the final salvation will not happen by your effort. It will be my prasad or my grace. So Gyan needs Bhakti for its completion. The third is Ashtang. In this Ashtang Yoga, Maharshi Patanjali has built Bhakti inside. Because he says, Ishwara Pranidhanat, Samadhi Siddhi. You will only reach Samadhi when you surrender to God. In other words, every path has the prerequisite of Bhakti. And if you remove Bhakti, what happens? Yoga, Kuyoga, Jnana, Ajnanu. Jaha nahi Ram Prema Paradhanu Where love for God is not included, that is not yoga, it is kuyog. And it is not jnan, it is agyan or ignorance. So the first point is bhakti is necessary in every path. 